Hey, Josh here again, Stony Ridge Farmer. Um, making a video today because I haven't seen any good videos on how to change the oil in a John Deere Gator 825i. Also haven't seen any really good videos on how to change belts or clutches. Uh, as those wear out, I'll be posting more videos. But uh, today we're going to change the oil. I believe in synthetic oil. So we're going to use uh, only synthetic oil. This, this gator has almost uh, 300 hours on it. First oil change, I use synthetic. And I'll continue to use synthetic throughout the life of this machine. Uh, we're using a Fram Ultra Synthetic uh, XG4967 oil filter. And I'm using Valvoline Full Synthetic 5W30. And you'll see here I have written on the jug that the Gator takes 2.3 quarts. Look in your owner's manual, figure out how much oil it takes. Uh, it might save a little work in your future. So, uh, we'll get on with it, uh, get started on this oil change. So to get our oil change started, um, we're going to back up on our ramps and we'll put our oil in this uh, receptacle here for recycling. One thing, be sure you have it in four wheel drive when you back up on your ramps. So now our gator is uh, up on the ramps. Uh, as always, I'll have it in neutral with the brake set. And we'll get under here with the creeper and get started. So before we got started, uh, I went ahead and placed a jack underneath the front to raise up and level the gator a little more. Just so I could get more room underneath to access everything for the oil change. I have... Uh, couple jack stands here for safety. Um, as you raise this thing up, you want to do a little visual inspection of your suspension, which is dirty. Uh, you want to make sure your wheel bearings are functioning right, we're not loose. Um, everything seems to be nice and tight underneath our gator. So I want to show you here, I have a tote, storage tote, for oil chain supplies. Uh, Keep some rags, funnels, uh, strap wrenches, various strap wrenches and uh, oil change removal wrenches. Just so everything's together when I get ready to change my oil. Uh, that way I don't have to go to 10 different places looking for 10 different things to change my oil. Everything is in there where I need it and maybe I have to get an adjustable wrench and that would be it. So the challenge on the 825i not only to get to the oil pan drain plug. Also the challenge is to get to our uh, uh, oil filter. Uh, it's a very tight fit. I recommend getting an oil filter wrench and what we'll do is get in here, ratchet it off. So what we really need to think about uh, from the factory, these are really really tight which made it extremely difficult to get off. So as I'm under here talking to you, one, one trick to keep from dropping your oil plug into the bottom of your drain is to place the cap in the drain. And I'm going to take the plug loose right here and we're going to drain the oil and we're going to let the plug fall because it's going to make a mess. That's it. So the oil doesn't look too bad. Everything looks fairly good. The problem with these uh, gators is that uh, under here uh, it likes to run all over the place. When it comes out initially it's just all over the place. And I don't think there's anything you can do other than maybe put a piece of plastic right there or something. But it's not going to hurt anything. We're going to drain 2.3 quarts out. We're going to put the cap back in. Then we're going to refill with oil. Start it and recheck the oil. So I've got the oil filter off and I have my new oil filter. I have coated uh, my gasket with a little bit of oil and I'm going to put it on hand tight. Just really hand tight. 
you don't really need to worry about this thing coming loose because the uh, compression of the uh, gasket will hold it in place. Also when you put your oil filler plug back in the bottom do not over tighten okay be careful not to over tighten because buddy that makes a, a big job trying to get that thing out or stripping the threads is really uh, a pain in the butt. If you're like me sometimes you're in a hurry and we're gonna refill our oil um, and you're like, oh, well, I can do that. I can uh, hit that hole with uh, with a uh, oil can. I don't need a funnel. Go ahead, drop a funnel in there. Be smart. Don't spill oil all over your engine. I've done it. If you've ever changed oil, you've done it too. Go ahead and get yourself a funnel. Get yourself some good oil changing tools and uh, take care of your equipment. Our owner's manual says 2.3 quarts for the Gator. I have it written on my jug. I also have written on my jug that our drain socket is 14 millimeter. So next time I get ready to change the oil, I'll know to get out of 14 millimeter and that I take 2.3 quarts. Uh, there's an indicator here. Um, so I'm probably going to put two quarts and then a piece of a quart. I'm going to start it up, let it run, check the oil, and add accordingly. Where's our dipstick for our oil? It's right here. Okay, so we're gonna reach over here, grab our dipstick, pull it out carefully. We're gonna wipe it clean. And we're gonna stick it back in. Take it back out and see where our marks are. So now we got our oil change done. Uh, everything went great. Got a little funnel. Be sure you wipe out your funnel. Keep an old dirty rag. Save those old t-shirts, whatever. And wipe off your equipment. Put it up. Get the gator down. Get out there and have some fun. Woo! Good final piece of advice. Um, when you... Uh, do your oil change, consult your manual, make sure that you're changing your oil regularly like you're supposed to, but also when you get done, get yourself a label and put it on your dash of your Gator um, or your car or whatever you're going to do, get yourself a label, label maker and make a tiny label to tell you when your oil changes do. That way you won't forget. You don't want to do this once a year because you might put 500 hours on it this year and 50 hours on it next year. So. Be smart, keep a check on your oil and your equipment, and also uh, put a label on there so that you'll know when the next oil changes do. If you only buy one oil filter at the time, write down which oil filter you need. That way you may look online, you may be able to shop for it, find a cheaper one, you may be able to get it cheaper at the store. I encourage you to write everything down, keep good records, and uh, that way your equipment lasts a long time. And once again, I'm Stony Ridge Farmer. Thanks for watching.